Okay, what is it that we're learning from this problem? It's that we can find the gradient up until a certain time, just before this point here, we can still find the gradient. But at this particular point, we cannot find the gradient. So this point becomes the limiting value, because once it is at this point, we cannot find the actual gradient. I want us to look at this one, at this graph, this next graph here. Uh, if I have a graph like this one, uh, let me just sketch it again. Okay. Let's have it here. All right, having that, let's call this uh, point A again. Let's call this point A. Uh, let's call this point, if we call this X, what will be the value of Y? It will be F of Y. So Y here will be F of X, F of X. All right, let's go to that point, point B. Okay. Now look here, do you see the distance that is coming from here? We said this distance from here to here is one. In this particular problem, we are saying a distance from here to here is x in this particular case. Uh, let's look at this distance. We started from there. We were reducing our graph from our gradient from this position to that position to this position up to this position. But we realize that once we're looking for the gradient at this point, we cannot find it. So this becomes our, our limit. But what happens? Let us say this, this value here, this distance from here to here is h. As we were decreasing our gradient, the h, what was happening to the value of h? If, if we take our gradient, if we move it from this position to position b2, from b1 to b2, what happens to our h? It decreases. As I tilt it down, the value of h decreases. So the h is a distance from here to here. So h is zero here. So as this decreases, h becomes zero. We must be able to, to understand that. Now, we are saying in this particular case, if I have something like this one, uh, saying the same distance here, we refer to it as h, a distance from here to here. Let's call it h. Okay, now watch here. If a distance from here to here is x, and the distance from here to there is h, what will be the x value of my b there. Look at it, okay? The distance from here to here, because this is my zero, from here to here is x, and from here to here is h. What is my x value of point b? Of course, it should be this distance plus that distance. What is this distance? It is x, and what is this that, that distance? It is h. Therefore, the value of x at this particular point, it will be x plus h. This is the value of x. It is x plus h. Let me not put it in bracket just to clean it. It is x plus h. If x is x plus h, what then would be the value of y? If our x in that particular, uh, if the x coordinate there is x, remember here, if x was x, then y was f of x. We're saying here, this distance from here to here it is x plus h, because this distance, we just refer to it as h. So what will be the corresponding y value here? It will be f of x plus h. Yes, it will be f of x plus h. Let's close that bracket. Ah, let's find the average gradient there, the average gradient. Our m r will be equals to y2, of course, which is what? Which is? f of x plus h minus uh, y1, which is in this particular case, is f of x. This is over, what is our x then? At point b, it is x plus h. It is x plus h minus, what is our x here? It is x. Remember this will continue that way until, as I move it, what happens to the value of h? It, it decreases. In, in, in other words, it approaches zero up until this time. I know that I'm not going to find it at this particular point. So this becomes our limiting value. So we are saying our gradient, or our gradient in this case, which we can call it f of x prime, 
The supplements gradient. The supplements gradient. The supplements gradient. All this are one and the same thing. So our gradient in this particular case would be equal to the limit. Remember, this becomes our limiting value. As we move it along, our h, what does h do? It approaches zero. It approaches this point. Because we cannot find it at this particular point. So this becomes our limit as h approaches zero of this, which is f of x f of x plus h minus f of x all over. Let's see what happens there. Do you see the like terms? Yes. What is x minus x? Zero. We're left with h. Ah, this becomes a very important formula that we call it the first principle. So this is how this formula was, was originated. It's called the first principle. Whenever the question says, find the gradient or find the derivative using the first principle, this is the formula you use, and you know where it actually comes from. Right, I want us to do a few problems using the first principle, and it will show how to find the gradient or the derivative using the first principle. Let's look at the first problem that I want us to do. Uh, remember that all that we are doing here, we are studying gradients. Hence, we need to know more about gradients. If I give you this next problem, uh, let's just take any problem. Let's say f of x f of x is equal to, remember the topic now, it's first principle. This becomes my keyword. But if I see the word first principle in my question or in my exam, I think of this formula. f of x is equal to minus 3x squared. Let's just take the first one. f of x is equal to minus 3x squared. The question says, let us find the derivative or find the grand, average gradient using the first principle. Say f of x prime is equal to the limit as h tends to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x. So remember, I have given this formula at the back of your question paper in the data sheet. Always have it there. This is all over h. Writing this formula down will give you a mark. Make sure that you copy it correctly in your answer sheet. So rather than that, you go to the exam knowing the formula. This is, remember, that this is the gradient, f of x prime average gradient. That's what we're looking for here. This is the curve that we're using now. Still the power minus 3x squared. Okay. Let's do this. When we move on to the next section, we'll be talking about roots. You will be able to know the answer before you even do it. But we'll come to roots later on, to rules of differentiation later on. Let's look at this do at least three examples, then we move on to rules of differentiation. Let's look at this first one. What is happening here? Here we have f of x, what, but what do we have this side? We've got x plus h. What has happened? Wherever there was x, six of a bandla, who x plus h. After that, what happened? They subtracted f of x. One f of x, which? This is our f of x. f of x is that. Ah, so we're doing two things in this problem. Number one, where there's x, we push in f of x. When I look at this problem, x is saying down angle, saying down a yodwa. So there's only one position where we push in f of x, which will push in x plus h. After that, we subtract to f of x. What is our f of x? This is our f of x. Let's do just that. We are saying our f of x prime or our average gradient will be equal to the limit as h tends to zero. Now let's do this. Where there is x, you are going to push in f of x in this expression. Let's do it. It's minus three into r, there is x, we push in x plus h there, x plus h. But how is this x? It is squared, so this becomes squared. That's why your grade eight, grade nine will be important going further. I finished putting x plus h where there was x. What then do I do? I subtract f of x, I subtract f of x. It is advisable that you always put that f of x in bracket so that it will be mathematically correct. So this is minus three x squared. After finishing my numerator, I divide it by h. But let's move on. This then becomes the limit. As h approaches zero, let's do the thing. Plate eight, squaring a binomial. We say at this level, we don't expect people to open two sets of brackets, to say x plus h into x plus h. That's plate eight. At plate nine, you start doing this by inspection. Because you'll be applying it in this type of problems. So mathematics is step by step. Let's do this. Let's do the thing x times x, x squared times minus 3. Let's follow the steps first. 
Just give you the idea. The first step, you multiply the first term by the first term. The second step, you multiply the first term by the second term and you double your answer. The third step, you multiply the second term by the second term. Ascend the Nick. Number one, x times x. It's x squared times minus 3. It is minus 3 x squared. Step number two, you multiply the first by the second and double your answer. So this will be x h times 2. It's 2 x h times minus 3, which will be minus uh, 6 x h. Well, let's do the last step. It's h times h. It will be h squared times minus 3, which will be minus 3 h squared. Minus. Ah, minus times minus, which will give us plus 3 x squared. Remember, this is all over h. And you even know where we got that one from. Okay, in most cases in this problem, when you do them, you'll notice that the first term will go as well as the last term. It might not be in the, be the last term, but the last part one, but two terms will go. So this and the one. Anything else? Nothing. So you've got to find a way to get rid of this fraction. How can we get rid of this h if there was h there as a common factor? Let's check how many terms do we have. We've got this term and that term. Do we have h on both terms? Yes, we do. Therefore, we can safely take h as a common factor in this case. This then, you don't throw this away. Remember, you don't make a mistake of writing this, this, this sign. It is equals to the limit as h approaches 0 or h tends to 0. If I take h out here, as a common factor. Because my, my aim is to get rid of this h. If I take this one out, I'll be left with minus 6x. If I take h out there, I'll be left with minus uh, 3h. Remember, this will be all over that h. OK. Your eyes are the most important tool in your mathematics. You don't think about this. You don't practice it. You don't pray about it. You just use your eyes. You can see this h can, go, can cancel with that h. That's what we are, le we are left with. Let's deal with this now. The limit as h, up, h tends to 0. We say that, but wherever we've got h, we can tend, tend that to 0. But h tends to 0. So in other words, where there's h, we push in 0. Let's do that. What will we have then? We'll have minus 6x minus 3, where there's h, says for 0 now. That's what this is saying. Therefore, our f of x prime will then be equal to minus 6x Minus 3 times 0, it's 0. So this becomes our answer. Ah, when you differentiate this, it's either whether we use the rules, or in this case, we're using the first principle, the answer we got was minus 6x. Let's take another one. I want to take another one which will have at least two values of x. Number two, then we do the last one, which will be a fraction. If we do the second one, uh, let's take this one. Example one. Example two, if I take f of x is equals to uh, 3x squared minus 2x. Let's take this one, for example, and check what the value will be, what the answer will be. All right, remember that the question says I must find the derivative using the first principle. And I know my formula. My formula says f of x prime, writing the formula down will give you max is equal to the limit as h tends to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x. This is all over h. Because the first principle. Let's do this thing. Ah, what is this thing to us? When there was x, there's x plus h. After that, we subtract f of x. In this case, what is f of x? f of x is that. We are told that f of x is this one. So we will be subtracting that here. But whenever there was x, there was x plus h. But in this particular problem, Zimbili and Dawei know x. So before I subtract f of x, I've got to cater for that first. Whether, it's, whether I see x, I push in x plus h. Ah, Usakona Futnala I do the same thing before I subtract f of x. Let's do this thing. This then will be the limit as h tends to 0 of, this is 3, ah, that is x. So where there is x, what do I write? I write x plus h. How is this x plus h1? It will be squared because my x is squared. And I got there. There's still x there. I've got to minus 2 and put x plus h again. 
Am I done with putting that x plus h? Yes, I'm done. Once I'm done with this process, I subtract f of x. Then I subtract f of x. In this particular case, what is our f of x? It is equals to, ah, put it in brackets. It is 3x squared minus 2x. Remember, this is all over h. Right, that is all over h. <clears throat> Let's do this thing. This then becomes the limit as h turns to 0. Squaring a binomial again, it becomes important in your calculus. So x times x, it's x squared times 3, it's 3x squared. x times h, it's xh, double that answer, it's 2xh times 3, it's 6xh. The last step, h times h, it's h squared times this 3, it will be plus 3h squared. Let's break these other brackets. Minus 2 times x, it's minus 2x. Minus 2 times h, it's minus 2h. Let's break the last bracket. This then will give us this times that. It is minus 3x squared. This times this, it's plus 2x. Remember, this is all over h. Use your eyes. Use your eyes to check. Isn't it was you cancel, there's your cancel out there. I can see that 3x squared minus 3x squared, it is 0. Anything else, just use your eye. Minus 2x, positive 2x. Those two are gone. Same scenario as I had here. There's a fraction, which is h. How do I get rid of this h? Look at the terms that I, I'm left with. I'm left with this term. I'm left with this term. I'm left with this term. Any other one? Oh, there's another one. Right. Those are the three terms. When I look at these terms, they've got what they call a common factor. I don't study this, I don't think about it, I just use my eyes and see it. Let me take that out as a common factor. Remember, there's the limit as h turns to 0. If I take h out here, I'll be left with what? If you hide h, you are left with 6x. 6x, take h there, you'll be left with 3h, 1h, as I said, to the power 1. Uh, this one, it would be minus 2. Oh, there's no h anymore, because I've taken out as a common factor. This is divided by h. Right, let's go. This h, we'll go with that h. Let's get rid of this one, but h becomes zero. Let's do that process. This then becomes six x plus three, where there is h, that's why was zero. Zero, then minus two. Therefore, our f of x prime, our average gradient, in terms of x would be six x, Yes, 6x minus 2. This becomes our solution. After this, I want us to do that, which will be a fraction. Thank you.